Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Today I want to talk to you about a very important feature that's part of the Cisco collaboration solution overall, and that is the single button or one button to push functionality on the Cisco video endpoints. This functionality has drastically reduced the complexity, particularly for end users, to join a scheduled video conference. Instead of dialing an IP address or a SIP URI as they would have had to in the past, this information is actually embedded in the email invite whenever you include a WebEx uh, in an email invite. Uh, and when you include the physical room that an endpoint is in, this SIP URI that is required for the video endpoint to join the meeting is actually embedded in that invite and embedded into the, uh, the controls for all intents and purposes on that video endpoint. Essentially, the experience is as simple as the user walking in, sitting down in front of that endpoint, and pressing the green button, or now in the case of WebEx Assistant, asking the endpoint to start that meeting. Uh, the meeting description is there, the time frame is there. Uh, it's extremely easy to go from uh, you know, that calendar invite to actually in the meeting itself. So with that, however, there's a little bit of administrative work that has to be done behind the scenes. So what I want to show you today is how to actually provision this functionality in your environment. Often we talk about this uh, with customers and so forth, but a lot of times I find that organizations don't have it set up and this hampers their adoption, their user experience, and, also, and ultimately they just don't get as much from the technology. So with that being said, I'm going to dive in and show you exactly what you need to do and I'm going to use an Office 365 environment in a Cisco cloud uh, implementation to show you how this is done. For all intents and purposes, this is exactly what you're going to step through. If you find this type of thing helpful, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, let's dive into it. You need to log in to the WebEx Control Hub. So you want to get that done. When you're logged into the Control Hub, go ahead and select Services. Under Services, what you're going to want to do is look for the Hybrid Calendar option for Office 365. Now, of course, if you're doing a hybrid calendar with Exchange or Google, you can actually select those options here as well. I always start with the View Prerequisites. You can open documentation, and I'll include this documentation link in the video description, of course. You can step through the steps, check them off here, and when you're done, hit Close and Set Up. The next step is to authorize the Cisco WebEx Control Hub to communicate with Office 365. In this case, it's going to do some API integration, so we're going to uh, need to give it admin credentials to do that. So we're going to hit the Authorize button. You'll be cross-launched to the Microsoft login information. Uh, if you have multiple accounts, obviously select the proper account. In this case, I'm going to use the admin account I use for my Microsoft uh, Office 365 environment. You're going to want to type in your password, obviously. Hit sign in. You'll be prompted to accept. This is going to actually show you what settings the application is going to get via API to your Office 365 environment. So in essence, this is getting API access to all things needed for calendaring. Uh, you're gonna have to accept this. If you need more details, you can look up more details from here. When you hit accept, take a moment to process, you'll be kicked back to the WebEx Control Hub. To confirm this is working, you have to give this system a email address so that it can send a test message. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Assuming everything works as expected, you should get a setup complete message. From here, you can enable the calendar service or the hybrid calendar service for users. Uh, we're actually gonna wanna focus on the actual endpoint itself and the place associated with it, so I'm gonna show you that. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at users and go from there. Here you can see we have two users in the system so far, the admin and a user account for myself, Adam. Uh, you can just simply click on this line item to edit the user. <clears throat> you can see the details of the user account. You're going to use the calendar service option here. I actually already have it activated. But what you'll do is open it up. It will load. 
you're going to want to ensure that Microsoft Exchange is checked and also that the toggle is toggled on. When you're done, click the X to exit out of that. The next step is to enable a place for the device in which we are going to assign to a resource in Exchange. So in Exchange you have a shared resource which you would typically link to a room or a piece of equipment. We're going to establish a place in the WebEx Control Hub and we're going to assign a device to it. Let's go ahead and go to places right now. You can see I have a few places already created. I want to add another one. It will ask you to validate your licensing situation. We are good to go. You want to give a place a meaningful name. I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it main office for lack of a uh, more creative title. You can actually call it main office and underscores and so forth will be added automatically to the SIP URI. Click next. Uh, in this case, it is a Cisco WebEx device, so we will choose that. Now, if calendaring is already enabled, we can simply enable that right here and click Next. You're going to need to label the mailbox, and you're going to uh, call out that mailbox by its actual email address. So, I know that it is called main underscore office at domain dot local. When you're done with this, go ahead and click Next. Assuming all has worked well, a QR code will be generated along with this 16-digit pin. You can then go ahead and enable that room system using this activation code. I'll assume that uh, you already know how to do this. There is a link up above if you need a, uh, some guidance on how to actually perform this step as well. When you're done, click the X and you'll be dropped back to your uh, list of devices. When you're ready to try your first test meeting, go ahead and put that email address of the office location in the uh, to field of the email. Obviously, you can then also put your other colleagues in there as well or uh, other you know users in there as well. You could technically put it in the location field as well. And again, use the directory search buttons to find these. These will be in the directory. The next thing uh, is uh, give it a title, give it a time, Come up here to the WebEx Productivity tool and click Add WebEx. It will spin for a moment or two and the WebEx information will be added. Now obviously when we send this it will fill, uh, fill it all in appropriately. But uh, that's it. Now this should make that invite appear on the uh, endpoint itself. Let's take a look at the screens that the endpoint will have as we approach the start time for this meeting. You will know the meeting service is properly enabled on the endpoint when you see the meetings button appear. This will be on the touch 10 panel on most endpoints or on the screen on the WebEx board. Go ahead and press this button and you can see the meetings for this endpoint for that given day. You'll notice that the list of meetings will come up. Now in this case the test meeting that we sent is not yet ready to start uh, and it's the only meeting for the day. You see it says no more meetings today. When the meeting is ready to start, however, you'll see something that looks more like this. Uh, the meeting starts in five minutes, so five minutes before the meeting, you get the join button option. And as other individuals start to enter the space, you'll see the name of the individual has joined. So you simply hit the join button, the green join button, and the meeting will start up automatically. Hopefully that's given you an idea of what's required to establish calendar integration with your video endpoints. If you have questions, comments, or other tips or tricks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.